Ethan Peck Sings Again Spock actor joined Star Trek Strange New Worlds cast on Christina Chong's new album at San Diego Comic-Con. Ethan Peck, who plays Lieutenant Spock on Star Trek Strange New Worlds, confirmed that he is joining his cast to sing again on Christina Chong's new album. Peck and the entire cast of Strange New Worlds memorably staged Star Trek's first ever musical to great acclaim, with the soundtrack hitting number one on Apple Music Top 10. Star Trek Strange New Worlds producers are even exploring bringing the musical to the stage. Meanwhile, Strange New Worlds cast was in a recording studio when they weren't shooting season three in Toronto. During Screen Rant's exclusive interview with Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Ethan Peck, Rebecca Romine, and executive producers Akiva Goldsman and Henry Alanso Myers, Peck said he performs on Christina Chong's upcoming album. Chong Peck, Celia Rose Gooding, Melissa Navia, and Jess Bush collaborated with award-winning music producer Jim Anderson. Here's what Ethan had to say about singing with his Star Trek Strange New Worlds castmates away from set. Ethan Peck, Christina Chong, who plays Layan. She's put out an ep already, and she's creating an album now. A full-length album. And she invited some of the cast to come record with her. And it was a really amazing, special experience. She's very excited to share that Strange New Worlds is the most musical Star Trek cast. Star Trek Strange New Worlds musical Subspace Rhapsody was a dream come true for the Starship Enterprises actors, especially Celia Rose Gooding and Christina Chong, who have backgrounds in musical theater. Christina launched her music career during the WGA and SAG AFTR strikes in 2023, releasing her first ep, Twin Flames. She followed it up during the holidays with a new track. FCKU for Christmas, which has both a naughty and clean version. Christina Chong recruiting her Star Trek Strange New Worlds castmates, including Ethan Peck, for her upcoming album is sure to pique the interest of Star Trek aficionados as well as Christina's growing fanbase for her her music. Peck was admittedly among the more reluctant Strange New Worlds actors to perform in the musical, but it's fun to see that Ethan has now embraced this side gig by providing vocals on Christina Chong's album. Star Trek Strange New Worlds fans now have a whole new season and new music to look forward to. I disagree that a Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover must happen, but I'd love to see it as much as I'd love to see the TARDIS materialize on the Starship Enterprise. I disagree with Russell T. Davis's assertion that a Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover must happen. The Doctor Who showrunner's comments came during the Star Trek X Doctor Who panel at San Diego Comic Con 2024. Ace's Comic-Con statement is his latest attempt to bring the worlds of Doctor Who and Star Trek together on screen. 20 years ago, when RTD was making plans for his Doctor Who revival and Star Trek Enterprise was still on TV, he wanted the two shows to cross over. Russell T. Davis returned to this idea when storylining David Tennant's final Doctor Who specials in 2009, but quickly abandoned the idea. Russell T. Davis's unmade Star Trek crossover is clearly an ambition that he's still keen to realize in 2024. The sly joke in Space Babies that Doctor Who and Star Trek take place in the same universe was RTD's first step to making this dream a reality. However, Davis's assertion that it must happen suggests that a Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover is a non-negotiable inevitability rather than merely something it would be fun to see. RTD says a Star Trek Doctor Who crossover must happen, but I disagree. During the Star Trek X Doctor panel at Comic Con, RTD responded to an audience question about a potential Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover episode by saying, We would love to bring you a crossover episode, and the way we can make that happen is the fans. The fans continue to make crossover art and stories and continue to ask and push to bring these two universes together. Because we must get together. It must happen. Doctor Who fans are used to Russell T. Davis's tendency to make hyperbolic and exacting statements like that, but it frames a Star Trek crossover as an exercise in fan service. Fan art, like the gorgeous Comic-Con exclusive poster by Dusty Abel below, is great, but it also doesn't have to sustain 60 minutes of television drama. For all Russell T. Davis's talk about how Doctor Who and Star Trek must get together, he's notably vague on why they should. It's clear that RTD is a fan of Star Trek, and Trek writers like Star Trek, Prodigy's Hageman brothers are clearly Doctor Who fans. However, it's not enough to put TV's two biggest Skyfee franchises together because the fans want it, 
even if those fans are screenwriters themselves. While a show of support for the idea on social media will be vital in selling the crossover to the BBC, Disney, and Paramount, there also needs to be a very good story reason why Doctor Who and Star Trek are crossing over. A Star Trek Doctor Who crossover needs a great story. A Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover should not be taken lightly and needs a great story to anchor it. Russell T. Davis's fondness for the Borg, via Gizmodo, feels demonstrative of his lack of imagination when it comes to bringing the TARDIS aboard the Starship Enterprise. Firstly, the Borg are incredibly overexposed in Star Trek. They're also so similar to Doctor Who's Cybermen that the collective's resistance is futile catchphrase is the same as the Cybermen's own resistance is useless assertion from Patrick Trotton's 1967 serial The Tomb of the Cybermen. Secondly, the Doctor and the crew of the Starship Enterprise already faced the Cybermen and the Borg in a Matt Smith-era Star Trek crossover comic, Assimilation. A much better story would be to pair up the Doctor and Starfeet to face a threat that demonstrates their very different approaches. Whether this is a threat to the fabric of time or reality, or a terrifying new alien villain would be up to the writers to decide. The Doctor's lonely god persona and quixotic nature makes him more like John Delancey's Q than one of Starfeet's officers, which would create a fantastic dynamic in any potential Star Trek and Doctor Who crossover. Scotty has his old Star Trek TOS jobs in Strange New Worlds Season 3 Star Trek. Strange New Worlds Season 3 is set to reintroduce Montgomery Scotty Scott, Martin Quinn, as a main character, but he won't be chief engineer. After his surprise appearance in Strange New World Season 2 is ending, the Strange New Worlds panel at San Diego Comic-Con confirmed that Scotty will be playing a much bigger role in Season 3 as a series regular. This was backed up by a clip from Season 3 that showed Quinn Scotty manning the transporter to beam down some newly vulcanized members of the crew for an away mission. As chief engineer of the USS Enterprise and one of the main characters of Star Trek, the original series, Scotty is a truly iconic part of Star Trek. James Doohan and Simon Pegg's portrayals of the characters set a wonderful precedent for Quinn to add his own flair in Strange New Worlds Season 3. Given the show's track record for expanding and improving TOS characters, Scotty is in good hands with Quinn and the creative team. However, before the franchise can again feature Scotty in his role as Enterprise Engineer, it must first depict him in a different job. Strange New World Season 3 gives Scotty his old Star Trek TOS job. Based on the sneak peek of Strange New World Season 3 from DCC, Scotty will be operating as Transporter Chief during the new season, mirroring his first job on the original series. In early TOS episodes, Scotty was often seen manning the transporter rather than in engineering, beaming crew members to and from various planets or ships on away missions. Scotty's operation of the transporter became a fairly iconic part of TOS, even giving rise to the catchphrase, Beam me up, Scotty, which has become widely used in popular culture outside the Star Trek fanbase. Now, Strange New World seems to be paying tribute to Scotty's original role by having him as the Enterprise's new transporter chief. Since Scotty wasn't shown in an engineering role until a little way into TOS's run, it makes sense not to promote him right away, as Strange New Worlds is firmly a prequel to TOS. Commander Pelia, Carol Kane, will continue in her role as Chief Engineer during Season 3. However, it will be interesting to see what kinds of duties Scotty takes on besides the Transporter, and if Strange New Worlds will foreshadow his future role.